Merry Christmas, everyone. Wait, is it Christmas yet? I don't know. Wow, it would sure be embarrassing if I released this after Christmas. <laughs> anyway, I apologize for not having any holiday videos this year. You guys don't really watch them anyway, so let's just stick to this regular format. I haven't talked about cancer for a while, so let's do that. There doesn't seem to be a lot of conspiracy theories about cancer lately. Have they just died down a bit? I don't know, but iHealthTube will always be here to make some interesting claims. Let's have a look. Uh, talking a lot about cancer, obviously, this weekend. Do we really fully understand the link between cancers and all the different toxins that we've been talking about uh, in our body. We can be exposed to things and not seemingly have a problem for decades and then something pops up. How, you know, how do we know? You talk about the people that, that smoke all their lives and don't, you know, and that doesn't do it. So how do we, do we really understand the link between the two these days? I've said this before and I'll say it again. Nothing guarantees to give you cancer. There are certain activities like smoking or being exposed to certain chemicals that can increase your chances of cancer, but ultimately it's a flip of the coin. If you smoke, you better bet you're more likely to get lung cancer, which I find to be kind of stupid because lung cancer is pretty damn deadly, you don't want to have lung cancer, yet it's also so easily preventable by not smoking. But if you smoke, are you guaranteed to get lung cancer? No. It's the same with any carcinogen or promoter out there. We know how they work and how they cause cancer, even if they're unpredictable. Carcinogens are substances that cause direct damage to DNA. It causes mutations or simply break down DNA. This can cause oncogene overactivation or deletions of tumor suppressor activity. Promoters promote cell replication and DNA synthesis, which leads to more errors in general. Alcohol is a great example of this. Combining alcohol with a mutagen such as smoking would have multiplicative effects in terms of increasing your chances of cancer. I'm sure you all know this already since I described it before in a previous video. Well, that was a long time ago. I think we understand it, but we cannot rate it and we cannot follow it in the way we would need to, and we're all different. Yep, that's pretty much correct. So look at how many years it took to prove that smoking massively increases the risk of lung cancer. Well, smoking has been known to be linked to cancer since the early 1900s. That's only a few decades after cigarettes became commercially available. I suppose a few decades is indeed quite a long time, depending on how you look at it, but what do you consider a long time? Look at how many years it took for us to prove that an exposure to asbestos, even though you worked with asbestos 25 years ago for six months and then stopped, you have a massive increase in the risk of asbestosis and mesothelioma. Long, long time, because it's not you cut your finger and it's bleeding. It's very, very slow. Asbestos also took a few decades to figure out after it was being produced industrially, which I guess is a long time. But you know, scientific progress isn't always fast. Especially back in the days when science was less prominent, it could take a while for things to be figured out. Nowadays with modern science, people are more meticulous, there is more peer reviewing, and a health concern can be followed up instantly with medical research. If you have a new disease outbreak, a treatment or a vaccine would probably be developed within months. Something like the Ebola virus, after its outbreak in 2014, had a vaccine developed in under a year. However, I suppose I can agree with you on certain cancer-causing agents to take a long time to figure out, just because the effects aren't directly observable. But I think now we have a good library on what is carcinogenic. The majority of chemicals and compounds, especially ones we use for laboratory research, now have measurements on how carcinogenic they can be. I don't think we're nearly as clueless as we were a century ago. And the truth of the matter is, tons of things are carcinogenic. Everything, pretty much, has some degree of being able to damage your cells. Just by standing somewhere, anywhere, means you're being exposed to carcinogens, because they exist right in your body. Sex hormones are an example I commonly use, that is carcinogenic. Just those circulating in your blood is enough to increase your chances of cancer. What matters, however, is the degree of it. Certain organizations classify carcinogens differently based on various factors. There are indeed some substances you probably should actively avoid if you are that type of person, but you can't worry about all of them. When someone gets cancer, you can't exactly pinpoint what caused it, because like I said earlier, carcinogens only increase your chances, not directly cause you to get it. So in our lifetimes, we are exposed to so many different cancer-inducing agents that you can't just blame it on one thing most of the time. Sometimes you can, don't get me wrong. If it was definitely responsible, like being exposed to too much radiation. But for most people, that's not really the case. The, the, the biggest issue is people that are skeptics. And I consider myself an extremely open-minded skeptic. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yes. Yeah, very good. Very excellent. But uh, don't we all consider ourselves that? Somebody goes into the doctor, and they were just diagnosed with cancer. And I, I don't care what cancer, so I won't even mention one. And the person says, Doc, what caused, what caused my cancer? And the doctor says, we have no idea what causes cancer. That is a lie. 
Okay, that's not ignorance. That is a lie. I can't speak for doctors because I'm not one myself, but I don't think any doctor would just say, we don't know what causes cancer. Instead, they would say something along the lines of, we don't know what caused your cancer. There's a big difference because the medical community definitely knows what causes cancer, but it can be a number of things or a combination of carcinogen exposure. Most people just develop it naturally without having one factor significantly increase their chances. The doctor likely isn't going to know your specific case, even if they followed you your entire life. If I'm this little bird on the patient's shoulder, the little bird would say, Doc, what does the word carcinogenic mean? What's the doctor going to say? Causes cancer. Causes cancer. Excellent joke. 10 out of 10. I notice up in your bookcase, you have something that says PDR in it. And then underneath that, it says physician's desk reference. What does that contain? The doctor's contain, oh, that contains every single currently legal prescription pharmaceutical drug. Correct. That's the proper answer. Do you have any idea how many of the thousands of drugs listed in that book in your library are listed by the manufacturer of that pharmaceutical drug that one of its side effects and conditions that's known is that it's carcinogenic? The doctor would say, no, I don't look for that part. Yes, many drugs are indeed carcinogenic to some degree. But to talk about this, we need to go a little bit more in depth about the formal definition of carcinogen. See, a carcinogen, when applied to drugs, is very specific about its classification. The way I've been using the word up until now was very loose in general. Medical definitions separate these substances into multiple groups. For example, group 1 to 4, with 1 being most definitely carcinogenic and 4 being most likely not. If a medical drug was found to be incredibly cancer-inducing, then it simply wouldn't be used. But that also depends. If it's a drug that could save your life, for example, it damaging your DNA in some cells is probably the least of your worries. Chemo and anti-immune drugs are commonly carcinogenic to some degree. Yes, that's right, many chemo drugs are carcinogenic. Cyclophosphamide, for example, is one that is well known to have that side effect. Tacrolimus is another example pulled from the anti-immune category. The point is, yes, there are drugs classified as carcinogenic, but usually the effects aren't too great that the costs outweigh the benefits. And that's sort of the point, right? Drugs in general are always going to have a ton of side effects, but I'm sure these side effects aren't going to justify you not taking a certain drug. Something can be carcinogenic, but you need it in order to solve whatever condition you're under, and being cancer inducing is pretty common when it comes to pharmaceutical drugs. Sometimes you just can't avoid it, but don't worry too much about it, especially if your doctor says it's okay because it's probably not going to be as bad as you think it is. Do you have any idea how many pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides are listed by their manufacturer as required by law as carcinogenic? Well, no, I don't, I don't follow that kind of stuff, the doctor says. Okay, do you have any idea how many types of solvents? toluene, benzene, all these different things are listed by the manufacturers as carcinogenic. No. Well, Doc, let me tell you. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of substances that the manufacturers that sell them to the distributors that sell them to the retailers that sell them to the public have to call them carcinogenic. So when you told that patient that we don't know what causes cancer, that's not true. Are carcinogens really the end-all be-all though? Because even if you aren't exposed to external substances that causes cancer, you'd still be under the mercy of hormones and also replication errors that happen randomly. Those cause cancer too. If you're somehow able to go in and pinpoint the exact mutation that caused the first cell to become rogue and form a tumor, then somehow also pinpoint what caused that mutation, then I guess yeah, whatever that was is the reason you have cancer. But that's unrealistic and you can't do that. For all you know, it could just be a simple replication error when your cells decided to divide. Pointing out that drugs have carcinogenic effects doesn't help because you can't say for sure that that was the sole reason you got your cancer or any carcinogen in general. What we don't know is what combination of those caused his or her cancer. That'll accept. Don't ever say we don't know what causes cancer. We have a great idea and we're not outlawing any of the stuff. So it's really, really hard unless you have someone, which sometimes we do, that has an occupation that gives them an exposure to something that we know. So for example, I've had patients that were painters and one got leukemia and one got lymphoma and their doctors told them, because the doctor knew what they did, you know, your hobby is what caused this, don't you? Okay, so it seems we agree on this point. You can't say what causes someone's specific cancer, but you can say what causes cancer in general. But it seems like you're kind of strawmanning doctors here. If you show me a clip of a doctor saying we don't know what causes cancer, then yeah, okay. But for now, I remain as an open-minded skeptic. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. I would like to say a happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you are all having a wonderful break and a happy new year. 2020 is going to be great, and we'll have tons of new videos, so stay tuned. Thank you once again to Fireshark for his great support over at Patreon. I will see you all next year.